us to do as, as teachers, as educators, is to kind of provide that feedback. We do it all the time with kids. We have no problems helping them see what their next steps are, but somehow it's a lot harder to do with, with colleagues, with peers, right? And it's not saying that you know, um, we don't appreciate lots of things that they have done in the task, but it's about, okay, how do we move that task, move those assessment processes further along on the continuum? And that's the goal here. And that's why we're asking you to focus on just one of the four or five principles so that you can be really focused in your feedback to those individuals. And one of the things I wanted to do was to share the process of this inquiry with, uh, with parents as well. So if you remember, I think I announced this plan off to you last time. The students are creating a crash course in world history video regarding Japan and changes in world view. So I took a few photos of the process. We started off, I put them into groups according to Amy's method of uh, two, people you, two people you would like to work with and one that you have troubles with. And I used a Google form like you're using right now to get that information. Here they are in their groups doing their brainstorming. They created in Google Docs, a little drawing, and this was a collaborative one where they made a mind map about what they wanted to, uh, to highlight. As part of that unit as well, we created digital storytelling rubrics, and they helped each other. They did self-assessments on their first attempts of these radio plays, and then we also in groups gave feedback. So there was multiple feedback loops on that first attempt. But none of this counted. And I was really amazed at the detailed feedback they gave one another. Right now, this last few weeks, we've actually been doing the video production. So they, they're using their own devices, laptops. You can kind of see some of the setup here where they're uh, doing their recording. They also working in some stop motion animation for the titles and some of the big ideas. Excellent. See that a little bit here, the creation. And we're also doing green screen. So you can see here they, they've, got, they've got some Japanese characters. They're just getting set up. Some of them also did some role playing for their videos as well. Some of the girls here are putting things together in iMovie and it's their first attempt. That's actually pretty good, but part of the feedback is they share that with another group who uh, will looking at our goals and our rubrics, give them some feedback, and then they will edit it. The biggest thing I've learned through this, and I think Alana started off with this, is how to let go of telling them what to do. To let them sort it out and trust that with, if there's multiple feedback loops, they get more meaningful feedback from their peers. What if the students had to create a formative assessment document something where they're tracking all that peer feedback? and then self-reflective feedback that the parent could see because I mean you have them already into this um, full web page. Yeah, and the way you, you say this is their first attempt mm. and I'm just thinking about just that language in the classroom implies to the students that they have more than one opportunity or chance to get it, mm. get it right, right? Mm. So it almost gives them permission to try, take risks. Mm -hmm. experiment, try something out because they know it's not a one shot. I was also interested, can you talk about how you said um, they're giving each other feedback, even though it wasn't graded, they still took it very seriously and they gave each other really insightful comments. Why can you go through the, um, the, the top rights that we have in our Twitter rights and freedom set and ask them what the, why they feel these are the most important. <laughs> I just opened up Twitter and I did a quick search for Syria and right now, 15 minutes ago, there was somebody who exploded himself. Um, and you should see the pictures that are coming up under hashtag Syria. And then I hashtag Canmore. And <laughs> you should see the pictures that are coming up out of uh, my workspace today with three sisters and then the And this is kind of a culminating uh, task that we have in the unit. And it's called our Freedom of 18 budget assignments. You've probably heard the term Freedom of 55, right? So the um, well, Freedom of 18. Basically, the gist of the project is that they are going to create a, a budget and a plan for their year right after. And so I'm sure you've all seen infographics, right? There are these visuals that tell a story. And really, 
what an infographic is, it's about making data cool. So this is an example of a social studies um, assignment for grade eight. And uh, the theme in grade eight is world. Yeah, the overriding is. question was evaluating the contribution of individuals. Uh, so are, are there experts in, in that, that do that, or, you know, like critics that can brought in, or within, looking at National Geographic, are, are the I journalists agree. doing that, or is there a way that there can be made a connection of why, how can I use this skill in my community? And again, invited him to help establish some of the assessment criteria, um, I think it was really powerful. So let, our question was, why, what do our fish need to stay healthy and not die when we decide that it should like that? Because our fish aquarium in the classroom was starting to turn green. Full right from the curriculum. Then we talked about and brainstormed how we were going to assess our but students. To begin with, uh, I th I'm really thankful for what we've done with this course. Can I take this trip to the note here? Uh, because it's made me reflect on how to be a better designer of learning. Um, I, think, I think as we move forward, I think all teachers need to be better designers. And as a learning support teacher, I think. Sometimes I have to be creative in, in terms of how I might design or of learning. 